Okay, so it may seem strange that the um, form momentum, the magnitude of the form momentum, is independent of the part of, of a particle's velocity. I mean, after all, <laughs> our normal experience is that the momentum, the three momentum, certainly depends on the velocity. It's linearly proportional to velocity. But on the other hand, it's it makes sense because um, velocities are relative, right? So it uh, the the velocity, I mean, the momentum of a particle in a general way actually should be invariant. Okay, and so in this in this formulation, when we use the form momentum, we see that it in fact it is that the magnitude of the form momentum is invariant. Okay, so now what is the meaning of the form momentum, and indeed, what's the meaning of the why did we why did we uh, why did we introduce the four displacement and then the four velocity and then finally the four momentum? Well, what we've seen so far, right? We sh we showed in the last lecture that the three the normal three momentum um, is not invariant uh, in relativistic uh, under relativistic transformations from one cor one reference frame to another. It's not invariant, and it's therefore it's not conserved. So um, the four momentum is it is a four vector, and so by definition, it is invariant. Okay, the vector itself, the four vector itself, is invariant, and so this is in fact kind of a new the the, the updated um, sort of redefined concept of of conservation of momentum. Uh, that's relativistically invariant, and that is that in all interactions uh, between particles or collisions or decays of particles, the total f four momentum is what's conserved. Now, in order to keep track of things, um, it's pretty customary customary to sort of designate the different components of the um, four momentum uh, with uh, the T, the temporal, and then the spatial components, and um, this just helps us sort of keep track. And um, it may seem confusing at first that the that the first component of the form momentum is we call the temporal part, but recall that this one just sort of is eventually can be traced back to the first component of the four displacement, which obviously has a, a, an explicit time dependence. So that's where we get that kind of um, Notation and um, in order for the form momentum to be truly conserved, each one of these components needs to be conserved independently in general. Okay, so in order for it to be generally conserved, then each component needs to be conserved, and in particular, the spatial components have to be conserved independently of the temporal component. So the spatial component of the form momentum is just the correct generalized. Um, relativistic expression for the momentum in three-dimensional space, the three momentum, and so it's given by p little little p. I've tried to designate. I've tried to show this p in this sort of a lowercase sub uh, script notation to uh, to sort of set it aside to make it different from the four momentum. So little p is equal to gamma m little u. Again, little u is a three velocity, not the four velocity. Okay. And so we see that it's related to the three momentum, the classical three momentum, except for that it's just multiplied by the the uh, Lorentz factor gamma. So if we look at the expression for the three momentum now, and we um, expand this in a Taylor series, when um, v or u, I guess, sorry, is much less than um, C, then so then we get that uh, little p is equal to m times u times here's the gamma factor, um, and if we do the Taylor ex expansion, then we get this expression here. Okay, we bring down the the um, we bring down the uh, exponent and we just multiply it by u squared over c squared. Now when u over c approaches zero, then this goes to zero. And we get the classical relationship. 